Yo, what's good everybody? It's your boy Prez and in this video, I'm going to be showing off my top 10 most overpowered weapons in Elden Ring for 2023. And before I do, I want to explain one rule that I kind of set for this ranking and that's that I can only infuse one weapon with the Blood Occult Seppuku. I think if I didn't do this, it would be kind of hard to rank because I'd just be putting Seppuku on everything in the top 10 because let's be honest, Bleed is the most OP thing in the game. So for this, I'm only going to be choosing one weapon to add Seppuku to and everything else will be a standard weapon on its own. But if you can leave me a like and a sub on this video, thank you so much. Comment your your picks on the top three after but yeah let's begin at number 10 i have the ruins great sword this is the only pick on the list that i have that's kind of iffy since it's number 10 there's lots of options you can replace with this but for this list i'm looking at how i play and what can really be the best suited for me on this top 10 and looking at it like that if i had to pick this is going to be my number 10 it's got a very beefy build hitting super hard but it also weighs a ton and at 50 strength and 16 intelligence this is a weapon that you really need to invest in it's got this really heavy move set that makes you feel like you're demolishing everything you hit even though it's ash war that slams the ground with a huge force it has s scaling and strength which puts it ahead of most strength weapons but also dips into intelligence dealing 90 magic damage at max level which can be looked at how you want but this can actually make the weapon better since you can buff it with talismans and spells so this is a very strong choice and beats most weapons so that's why it landed at number 10 for me at number nine i have eleanor's pull blade as a longtime souls fan i've always liked twin blades so i had to add this one in my number 10 it has probably the coolest ash war in the game you're like flipping jumping and spinning around in the air with the twin blade and the whole time you're doing that blood's flying around everywhere which makes it look nuts and it's ashore is very capable of staggering enemies by itself you just have to make sure that you're not spamming it it has a high chance of proc bleed doing 84 but with not so notable scaling or damage it makes the weapon pretty balanced so i'm happy with it being at number nine at number eight i have the dark moon great sword and i know for some people they're absolutely gonna hate that i put it here but for me and looking at the weapons in front of this one i would just rather use the weapons moving forward over this one every time it does have a semi-free range attack which i do like a lot but you first have to use your ash war to have the ranged attack then you can shoot these big sweeping projectiles forward and this is cool but without that it's just a very cool looking great sword it has a normal move set normal range average damage and average scaling and its ash war can only be used to buff the weapon's damage and add the ranged heavy it also stacks frost build up which is all good when it comes together it makes the weapon very good but like i said the weapons moving forward i would just rather use and upon saying that that brings us to number seven which is the wing of astol this was the direct competition for me with the dark moon great sword and when i use the two together i just realized which one i would rather use and that is the wing of astol i feel like i could put a lot more damage out with the wing of astol quicker and have a more fast move set and i'm way more versatile and at the same time i still have a ranged attack but this one doesn't cost me any fp to use charging the heavy sends two projectiles forward and if you want to mix it up you can cancel that and roll out of it these weapons have the same scaling but the wing of astol is cheaper to use meaning you have to spend less points to use this one so personally for me i put this above the dark moon greatsword but let me know where you guys put those next at number six we have my favorite strength weapon in the game the watchdog great sword i'm not gonna sit here and glaze this weapon any more than i already do because i'm aware i do but it's a cheap colossal great sword that can be power stance and it's not that high of a level to use this can be obtained twice in one playthrough so you can easily power stance it it has an s scaling and strength if you add the lion's claw ash of war and if you do add that ash of war it has the biggest stagger potential in the game on bosses it looks sick the damage is very high it's just all around in my opinion the best option for strength builds unless you want to use a giant hammer and spam rkr the whole time i mean if that's how you want to play that's up to you but i just don't really vibe with that at number five i have the blasphemous blade this is an ideal weapon for anyone looking for a fire greatsword build this is literally your best choice it has high physical damage for also doing high fire damage and upon each kill it restores health back to you it's ash war is just like the ruins greatsword but this one does fire damage obviously and it has this completely crazy look to it it's like a golden royalty sword with bloody hands going all over it and i know some lore guy is screaming at his screen right now literally that's not even what it is it's a hero's remain scattered upon the sword literally this guy doesn't know nothing at number four i have death's poker this is definitely the best intelligence weapon in Elden ring it's got an amazing ash war that can be used as a huge bomb or can be casted forward leaving a frost fire trail that does super high damage it's got a nice overhead moveset which i like a lot but more importantly it has a unique heavy attack you kind of get a running star forward and sweep the sword up and it has a great chance to stagger enemies which also makes this weapon very useful and powerful and this is just an all-around amazing weapon weapon anyone going for an intelligence build you should use this build that i made on screen right now because this is the main weapon that i use in that build now we've made it to the top three and if you watched all the way up until this point thank you so much for sticking around i appreciate you staying around and if you just skip to this point just to see the top three well you missed a secret back in the video so i would recommend going back and looking for that hey you guys think those bozos went back to look for it at number three i have the rivers of blood all right calm down timmy don't freak out on me i know you hate me for saying that but listen i'm not the one who made this weapon overpowered and yes it is don't tell me
tell me how many times it's gotten nerfed i'm aware it's gotten nerfed but it's still overpowered i mean you're probably looking at the clips on screen it's still staggering bosses and doing insane damage and it's still procs bleeds so easy it still also does fire damage so on top of bleed you can also put in an overpowered fire build i mean until they completely remove the bleed effect or it's ash war this thing is always going to be overpowered in pve and if you deny that you should probably put it in a fire and bleed build and go try it right now because you're probably going to be amazed it's still op at number two i have well two weapons because they're basically the same thing and anytime i say something good about one everybody yells at me about the other one being better now remember at the start of the video i said i'm only choosing one weapon to add seppuku to and that weapon that i'm choosing is the bandit's curve sword or the scavenger's curve sword I, I don't care man they're basically the same thing we're actually talking about like a 20 damage difference between the two of these weapons anyways whichever one you want to use really doesn't matter but i recommend power stancing these since it's a curve sword and curve swords have the best power stance move set in the game from both a running attack and a jumping attack with bleed on both of them you're gonna be proccing blood loss so easy upon every hit it just makes these things actually broken and finally at my number one it's what we all want to see but i think it's gonna be no surprise to anyone it's moog's sacred spear this colossal spear i mean it's just broken dude it's ash war when fully released will kill literally anything in the game 95 percent of the enemies in this entire game can't even survive its full ash of war and if you buff it up and put in a correct build i don't know if any bosses can even survive it maybe fire giant can i mean anything with a phase two or moog obviously will survive this but basically what i'm trying to say here is basically everything in this game is gonna die to its full ash of war i don't really think i need to explain why this thing is so overpowered just go try it for yourself you don't understand people hate on rivers of blood so much when this weapon is secretly the true menace of this entire game and if you want to try an op build with the sacred spear check out this video on screen i'm gonna be updating this video for 2023 because i think a lot of people are actually getting into Elden ring now and i want to have a full breakdown video not just showing the items but also showing where to find everything if you have a question about where to find any of the weapons in this video leave it in the comments and i'll help you or i'm sure someone down there will help you i could have added to this video but i'm sure most of you guys would just look it up anyways if you really wanted it and most importantly here i really did just want to thank you guys for all the support i just hit 68,000 subscribers on this channel and in a week i've gone up 6,000 subscribers and that's seriously all thanks to you guys so for everyone who watches me hits me up on discord or just says anything just seriously thank you so much for all the support and if you're listening to this don't just think of it as some guy like reading a script even though i am i really do mean what i'm saying and that's why i have to write it down because i just want to get it out accurately and as best as i can so when i say thank you i am talking to you yes you listening thank you from the bottom of my heart seriously thank you for watching me content creation is what i want to do with my life and i just want to push past elden ring eventually i would love to start streaming one day which is why when elden ring dlc drops i'm gonna go live and from that day forward just continue to go live on my youtube or hopefully one day twitch inside roller stream over there and i'd love to do loads of things that you guys are into besides just playing this game like get on some aiden ross e-dates or just play any other games that you guys are into i'm really just open for all of it but i could seriously ramble all day long about this stuff so let me chill out and again seriously thank you guys so much for watching this video comment pizza if you made it this far in the video just to let me know but thanks guys my name is prez and i'm out bro peace